All right, homie homies, this is it. It's five minutes before midnight, May 31st. David Yu's going to announce the exchange. The price of home is going to skyrocket. It's happening, guys. It's happening. Finally. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Dan. Welcome to my show yet again. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about OMI token price. We've actually had a pretty good month last month. I know the community was expecting an exchange listing, which we didn't get. We learned that that was probably the result of some technical difficulties related to GoChain. But regardless, we did get a lot of other good news. We got the formal announcement of the VVverse. We will receive that in 2021 in some shape or form. We are migrating to Immutable, which should open up a lot of possibilities, especially in terms of other exchanges, perhaps. And the drops, though they weren't what we were expecting, they performed very well. The app actually performed extraordinarily well compared to even a couple months ago. So you know the team is doing a good job. Now you would think with all this good news that maybe OMI price should have gone up a little bit. But when we look at the price, we're still kind of where we were before. You know, luckily we're no longer in the teens. We're at the 0 0.0025 level pretty consistently right now. So essentially just trading kind of sideways. Uh, why hasn't the price gone up? I want to explore that with this video today. But before we begin, if you like this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified exactly when I put this out. Now let's get back to the show. So we all know that OMI has been a pretty painful investment to have almost no matter where you bought it at. Uh, especially if you bought at the highs, you're down like 75%, maybe even a little bit more, maybe 80% down. Uh, it's been a pretty painful experience to be an OMI investor. I personally bought, I think my first entry point was at the 7.7 range. So I'm definitely down quite a bit from that trade. So I've been losing money. That's not new to anyone. Well, we got to ask ourselves, why is OMI price going down like this? You know, there's been more good news than bad. Some small disappointments, but in the grand scheme of things, better news overall. I think they did a great job reaching out to the community. I think they realized very early in May that they weren't going to pull off that exchange. So they did a lot of community outreach where they reached out to YouTubers. They did interviews. They did a lot of Q&As. That was very smart on their part because I feel like it gave a forum for people to ask them these pressing questions that they had, clear up any confusion. It was really, really smart. I would have expected us to be testing the 0 0.0035 level and not the 0 0.0025 level. And I actually think there's a very easy answer to this question. Why doesn't the price of OMI go up with the realization of good news. And the answer to this is staring us straight in the face. So if we look at Twitter, we can go to OMI data here. We see a bunch of OMI related statistics. We have the current number of OMI holders. We see there's an increase about of 147. We see how much OMI has been burned, about 3.3 million. We see the current status of the burn wallet, 5.3 billion, 103 billion tokens burnt altogether, and the current circulating supply. So this is the reason why I believe OMI has not gone up in price correlated with the amount of good news we've received so far. There's just a lot more tokens floating around. So if we look at coin market cap data here, we see that the current circulating supply is 166 billion OMI, which obviously is not completely true. The statistics, the statistics represented by OMI data is, is a little bit more accurate, more up to date there. So what we can see here is that OMI price has stabilized even with this good news. And the reason this price has been relatively stable is because 
our current supply of OMI has been increasing. If there is no increase in the OMI circulating supply, we would probably already be at the 0 0.0050 level as opposed to where we are now. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? No, it's kind of priced in the market. A lot of us are expecting tokens to be released and sold back onto the marketplace. If we look at this Medium article by Ecomi, they talk a little bit about the status of the founder tokens, and this was a big deal a couple of months ago. People were freaking out about the, the effect uh, founder token unlocks would have. They were afraid that people would dump them, which we really haven't seen, really. I mean, we were expecting some sales of tokens, so that's reasonable. But we see a total of 75 billion tokens will be unlocked by the end of the 12-month investing period, or about 18.75 billion tokens per quarter, or at a rate of about 6.25 a month, even though they get released quarterly. So these tokens are essentially coming into the exchanges and when there's an excess of supply, it does lower the price. And we all know this. So that's why I believe we haven't been seeing a corresponding increase in price because we have been having an increase of tokens in the market. So we know that there's going to be more tokens released over the next two quarters. And that will, of course, increase the circulating supply of OMI. So what effect is this going to have on OMI? Obviously, it's going to suppress the price. That's just going to happen. And I think that's why they started putting out a lot of good news, what to expect in the future. They did, the Ecomi team did a pretty aggressive uh, social media push by talking to YouTubers like Hello K, things like that. So the market is essentially matured to a stage where talking about something or seeing a rumor is not gonna necessarily increase the price like it used to a couple months ago. It's just not. I think OMI investors, VV, NFT holders, they're not gonna get excited about something unless they finally see a product. So how does this change my price predictions for 2021? I still believe we can hit five cents. It's still very possible. I think a range for me is about two to five cents by the end of 2021. And even though we've had a lot of good news, there's still a lot of tokens in the marketplace. As long as we get something big this year, something tangible that people can get excited about, we can still easily hit those price targets. And if you do the math right now, if you were to purchase OMI at today's prices at 0.0025, and we end up hitting two cents, man, that's still eight times your money in a year. That's really, really good. And even if you bought at the top, if we hit two cents, you just doubled your money in one year. I mean, that's still really, really good. I just think sometimes we get spoiled. We think that we should be getting Dogecoin returns, and that's not always the case. And most cryptos, in fact, don't start off that way. You can even look at Bitcoin or Ethereum. They didn't start off skyrocketing from day one. It took them a while to get into these huge valuations that we see today. So, so guys, don't get discouraged by the fact that you're holding OMI. Price hasn't really gone up. Still staying at pretty consistent levels. Good news is happening. Just continue to hold. Remember, a lot of us got into this because we have a long-term view. So don't let short-term fluctuations scare you off from holding OMI long-term. This is still a very, very good project. It's my largest low-cap altcoins right now. And I believe this investment is going to pay off for the vast majority of us. So guys, just continue holding. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. If you like it, please consider subscribing to the channel and comment down below. What are your thoughts? Do you have any idea why Omi is trading pretty flat like it is? Let me know in the comments. See you guys.